safe ride home. I'm so happy to be here in Buffalo tonight. Because the pew is a little too fast paced for me. Now, since we were here, I think it was five years ago, uh, you know, when, we, when Marty and I decided to come back, we wanted to make sure the show was fresh and new so we wouldn't appear as dusty and stale. So we rolled up our sleeves and we started to work on the show and we gave up. So, <laughs> welcome to the Dusty and Stale Show. There it is. <laughs> now, let me tell you a little bit about our show tonight. We have a lot of comedy, we have some music, we have. Um, a little nudity. <laughs> we have a few swear words, so if you are in any way offended, please write me at my personal email, tough shit, no refunds at you. <laughs> now we wanted to make tonight a memorable one for you, so we have locked all the restrooms. <laughs> Our show is performed without an intermission, however you will feel there is an intermission because of a gigantic lull. <laughs> and I will bring him out here in a minute. Now, I am proud now to introduce a man I think of as one of the great over actors of all time. <laughs> one of the hardest working men in show business because it just doesn't come naturally to him. <laughs> this man has appeared in countless of two hit movies. <laughs> He talks so much that Stormy pays him hush money. <laughs> and he is the only Canadian who wasn't in Schitt's Creek. It's more than a thrill, it's a complete and utter obligation. 
Marty and I call this show, If We'd Saved, We Wouldn't Be Here. <laughs> wow. Hey, what? Weren't those old clips great? I mean, did Steve used to be funny? <laughs> say that for me, working with Marty Short is like World Cup soccer. Somehow, I just can't get into it. <laughs> and may I say to you that you look fantastic. Thank you. And I guess that's the benefit of looking 70 since you were 30. Disneyland's magic. 
magic shop when I was just 15 years old. And uh, that's me hanging up there behind you. <laughs> you never noticed. Can we take a closer look? <laughs> and see, I love this dashing photo of you from high school. Look at that. Well, you know what's amazing about this photo? It's a color photo. <laughs> And I love this dashing photo of you from high school. <laughs> this is the year I was voted most likely to marry a cousin. <laughs> and it's even got your grade point average. Up there. Yes, I <laughs> oh, next is uh, Tom Hanks, me, and uh, Marty. And this is something we do every five years. We we. Try to make colonoscopies more fun. <laughs> so we have a night and we uh, book our colonoscopy and we stay at one of our houses. He, everybody has their own bedroom and we play poker. We drink the liquid all night. Yes. So. And in the morning, the bathroom looks like day 15 of a carnival cruise. <laughs> <coughs> now, <laughs> no, just don't worry about me. <laughs> Next photo. This, okay, here we go. This is, uh, wow. John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Mick Jagger, and me. And right after this photo was taken, we tested positive for everything. <laughs> Next! Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no, oh, 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 there you go. That's uh, me and the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's officially taken the flight to New York. And and it was such a thrill for me to take this photo with his balls. <laughs> what did he sign it with? <laughs> now, this next photo from, uh, yeah, this is <laughs> Meryl Streep, myself, Paul Rudd, Selena Gomez, and Marty. And I love this photo. I give this photo four stars. Yes, Holy Murders in the Building is our new show, and uh, we love the show. You know, and it's interesting, this show is just like Steve at the Urinal, in that it streams for 36 minutes. Uh, and our last photo, this is actually a, a historical photo, this is a, actually Marty Short in the actual Oval Office. Yes, it is. It's 1994, and you're probably wondering what I'm doing. Well, I know what you're doing. The question is, did Bill Clinton take you up on your offer? <laughs> and now, it's time to bring back that fabulous musician. A man who appears every night on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Mr. Jeff Babcock. Thank you, Jeff. Now, you know, Steve and I actually met on the film Three Legos. That's right. And it was on that movie. I didn't know Marty at all. Uh, the first time we worked together. And there's a lot of downtime on a movie. And that's when I first realized he had kind of a quirky sense of humor. So, because of the downtime, we passed the time, Chevy, Marty, and I, and one of our trailers playing Scrabble. So, we're playing Scrabble one day, and I looked over and I saw Marty writing out a little note. And he slid it over to me and it said, I will let you ball my wife Nancy for an E or a Q. <laughs> uh, I tend to be competitive. <laughs> and now, what we're going to do is ask uh, Jeff Babcock to go into the audience and select three people to come up here and be amigos on the stage with us. Yes, well, that's yeah. awesome. And you know, while, while uh, Jeff is doing that, Marty, you know, on the three amigos, I did. I did trick ropes. You did what? Yeah, I did trick ropes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I thought while we're wasting some time here, uh, I would do some of the trick ropes I did on uh, Three Amigos. Oh, I, did. I was hoping you would. I was hoping you'd do some trick ropes. <laughs> the butterfly, yeah. thread the needle. Oh, oh, yeah. Then you go uh, behind the back a little wow. bit. There we go. Steve, this is fabulous. Thank you. 
I wish I could do something like that. Yeah. Do you really like it? <laughs> oh, I do, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Just think of me as Ted Lasso. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, how about Amigos? Good. Oh, for God's sake. Look at this. Look at this. That's an Amigo. Come on over, sir.
music shows and play on the street for money. No, but only do it in the, in the summertime. Really? Yeah. And, and, and I don't, do you still keep up with music? Well, you know, by accident, like everybody does. You know, you just songs come on in your car and your headphones and like Alexa. And, in fact, uh, my, my, we have the Alexa in our house, and sometimes we'll just start playing. And uh, my daughter loves that song, Levitating by Dua Lipa. Mm -hmm. And whenever it comes on, whenever it comes on, she runs in and I pick her up by the arms and swing her around and toss her in here and catch her. It's so sweet. How old is your daughter now? She's 57. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Steve! Steve! <laughs> the chair? I think it's the chair. Maybe it fell apart. Something like that. with two massive movie stars. 
were, so they told me. And, uh, <laughs> and the opening night of Three Amigos was literally like out of a movie. You know, Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood, strong lights going. And uh, the studio had asked the three of us to show up in our full Three Amigos regalia with the hats and the bolero jackets and the spurs. But at 4 p.m. that afternoon, I called Chevy and said, let's wear our tuxes and not tell Marty. <laughs> I've 
got to be in show business. And now, Steve and I are touring all over North America with our show. Although at Steve's age, he doesn't really tour, he just kind of wanders off. <laughs> but we catch him! Steve Oakley, 
geography and music and relationships since the 30s. But what I did learn about geography, Rochester, Buffalo, this area of New York, simply is to be
Maybe because our cousin lived with us and she put out. <laughs> oh! oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Hey, listen, even she used to say it's better to have loved a short than never to have loved a tall. She was very, ego, very clever. Very clever. I have three beautiful children. And now, in the last couple of years, I've become a doting grandfather. And hearing the pitter pat of those little people around the house, looks like when David Spade comes to visit. Um, <laughs> my youngest grandchild is at the age where all he does is poop, reach for a breast, or fall asleep during the day. We nicknamed, we nicknamed him Donald. Um, <laughs> They had a mixed marriage, different genders, it, it was the 50s. And, uh, <laughs> but I adore them. I see my mom, God rest her soul. She's not dead yet. <laughs> not looking good, I'll tell you that much. My father was a little more complicated, you know, he was Irish. So there was a lot of. <laughs> Say, Dad, why make the noise? Just drink the gin. You know? <laughs> he drank gin and ginger, no ice, because the ice feels the Irish feel that the ice can be addictive. So, <laughs> but anyone, I don't know if anyone ever had a parent who tippled. My father, a very successful guy, he was a general sales manager at the steel company of Canada, and had a big bar in his office. Never ever drank at work. But when he got home, he would make up for lost time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he wouldn't start that on, on the weekends. He really hit it, you know. Um, he, you know, he'd wait till the sun was up, at least. But, uh, <laughs> but on a typical Saturday afternoon, you look over and you realize it wasn't so much he was slurring, you realized his hair was drunk. <laughs> Is always teaching the secret of golf. You know, Marty, I was uh, I was talking to this Jewish chap at the club. Uh, <laughs> Jewish chap at the club, Goldberg or Silver or Bronstein. I can't remember. I know there was a precious metal involved in this day. At any rate, he said to me, He said, you know, Charlie, did you hear about the blind prostitute? I had to hand it to her, and, uh... <laughs> his joke. <laughs> and then my mother said, Oh, Charles, not on Sunday. And then the fights would start, of course. And I was the youngest of five children, so as the fighting was going on, I'd sneak off to my attic bedroom. And oh, I loved my attic bedroom, and I'd listen to... Frank, Tony, Sammy. But eventually I had to leave the attic. Mainly because I was 23 years of age and my parents had sold the house to other people. <laughs> and in the end, it was show business that lured me. The year, 1972. <laughs> and that year, Off Off Broadway was obsessed with two things. Religious musicals and full frontal nudity. I auditioned for Jesus Christ Superstar, but I didn't get it. <laughs> then I auditioned for Hair, but I didn't get it. And then I auditioned for an all-new tribal rock musical of the second greatest story ever told, Step Brother to Jesus. <laughs> and a terrible thing happened. I got it. <laughs> My father Joseph, before he met the Virgin Mary, he loved my mother on some would-be Christmas night. The darkness covered, but in the daylight, sure looks scary. My 
mother was a leper, and that ain't a pretty sight. And so he left her, but she still had his love inside her. So on her one good leg, she crawled to Galilee. There were no ones left, with gifts of gold and myrrh beside her. A man once 
said, to be able to play the banjo is to live forever. Alone and in a band. <laughs> young and busy with the banjo player. I say, Steve, how can I get my music out in front of people like you have? And I always say the same thing, two things. I say, one, be very creative. Don't let anyone tell you how to write your music. And two, already be famous. <laughs> I was recently asked why I don't make as many films as I used to. And here's what I said. I said, honey, why is our daughter talking to me? <laughs> I was asked this. I, I said, Steve, when your imagination goes dry, how do you replenish your creative vessel? And I said, really, can you just finish the prostate exam? <laughs> I turned 78 this year. Presidential material! <laughs> Sometimes I'll go out to a little kid on the street and I'll say, How old are you? And they go, This many? And then they'll say to me, How old are you? And I go, You know, I'm still learning about life, too. My wife is very smart. She, she kind of caught my attention the other day. She said, you know, Steve, babies don't get sarcasm. <laughs> and I realized I was wasting my time going up to strollers on the street and saying, oh, what a cute baby. <laughs> okay. You know, I realized the other day I have written over a hundred banjo songs, so we better get started. <laughs>
living room. I was a stand-up comedian. I just used the banjo by myself. And when I started playing with a band, it's a very different thing because there's dynamics and rhythm and when to come in and when to go out, how loud to play. And I'll be honest with you, some nights I go off and I think, well, wow, I play great tonight. I feel really good. And other nights, I think, hmm, I didn't play that well. You know, so I decided to check out this live performance thing to see, are they really that good? So I went to see Eric Clapton play live. <laughs> and I thought, he's not that funny. <laughs> Traveled here that over 10 years ago, we had Marty and I have a ritual. The, the uh, Bluegrass Gentlemen have a beautiful tour bus. And every night after the show, we go out under the tour bus, we discuss how the show went, we have some wine, sometimes. we've written songs together. And I said to Marty, you know, we're not going to be doing this forever. We have got to get a photo of Woody Platt and Bluegrass Gentlemen in the tour bus. So we got a nice, nice photo. Do you have that photo? Yeah. <laughs>
you may know I started out as a magician and juggler, but what you may not know is I also started out as a ventriloquist. I'm going to show you some of those skills tonight. Preparation and work that goes into our show 
you tonight. And Marty and I have a ritual we do backstage before every show. And I noticed that one of the crew members was videotaping it, and I thought that might be interesting to show the audience. So here it is, uh, Marty and I preparing for tonight's show. Hi! Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> let me just say one thing to you, Stephen. I don't want to embarrass you, but it is true that I would not be on this stage tonight were it not for Steve Martin. So thank you for driving. Okay. <laughs> and you have been one of fabulous, great, and brilliant audience. We want to thank you. We want to thank you very much. Enjoyed our show tonight. And if you didn't enjoy the show, maybe when you go home tonight, you should take a good look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> and think, what can I bring to the show next time? <laughs> and you know, see, truthfully, I love this so I just hope we can do this forever. Well, of course I thought about that, but I realized you're not gonna live forever. And um, and I thought that's too bad because you won't be able to hear the wonderful things. I'm going to say at your memorial. So, what I did was I thought, why wait? So I took the liberty of writing up your memorial so you can hear it now. Well, that is so ironic, because you know what? I did the same thing I wrote your eulogy. Oh, well, let's read them, shall we? Let's do it. Now, Jeff, this is kind of a sad moment, so would you play some appropriately sad music, please? No, 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 not sad enough. Anything sad? <laughs> no, 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 not sad. Something, something really pretty sad. Reminds me of that famous Saturday Night Live sketch, Dick in a Box. <laughs> but Marty was taken away from us too soon, but sadly, not before he played Jack Frost in Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, Steve! Steve, it's so hard for me to look at you lying there, motionless, colorless. <laughs> the good news is the Steve Gone download should be so much faster on Pornhub. <laughs> Steve is such a great dad, you can tell that from his kids. They're so polite. You go to his house and they'd say, Would you like anything, Mr. Schubert? Could I get you a drink, Mr. Schubert? Can you give this note to the police? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to close this tribute by showing you my favorite photo of Steve. I'd like to 
close this tribute to Marty by showing you his favorite photo of himself. Thank <laughs> you. 
go. Send <laughs> in the goddamn clouds. Get the clouds up. Come on, little clouds. Whoa. Oh, don't bother.